Chapter 7, Scheduled Incarnations. Uh, today I thought that I will go back to the verse 43. Yesterday we did three verses 43, 44 and 45 together. But today I'll just go back because yesterday a point came up about different personalities who had been mentioned in the verses. Quite a, quite a few exalted personalities have been mentioned and uh, many devotees seems to uh, not know about them. And since they have been mentioned, since they are such exalted personalities, therefore I thought that we would discuss about them. So, today we will read the verse 43 that has been mentioned on the board and we'll start describing and we're discussing about those personalities. Bidaham Anga Paramasya He Yogamayam Yuyam Bhavas Cha Bhagavan Atha Daitavarya Patni Manoho Sa Cha Manush Cha Tad Atmajas Cha Prachina Bodhir Ribhu Anga Uta Dhrubascha Bedaham Manga Paramasya Hijoga Mayam Yam Bhavascha Bhagavan Athadaita Varja Patni Manasacha Manusha Tadat Majascha Prachi Nabar Prachi Nabar Hish Ribhur Anga Uta I'm sorry Prachina Barihir Ribhur Anga Uta Dhrubascha Prachina Barihir Anga Uta Dhrubascha Bedaha Manga Yuyang Bhavascha Bhagavan Athadaita Varjaha Patni mano sacha manusya tadatma jascha Patni mano sacha manusya tadatma jascha uta dhadhru bascha Prachina 
वेदाहमंगपरमस्य हि जोगमाया यूयं भगश्च भगवान अथ दैत्य वर्ज पत्नी मनुष्य च मनुष्य तदात्मजाश्च प्राचीन बरहिर रिभु अंग उतद्रुवश्च वेद नो इट अहम माइसेल अंग ओ नारद परमस्य of the supreme he certainly yogamayam potency uyuyam yourself bhavaha shiva cha and bhagavan the great demigod atha as also daitavarjah Prahlad Maharaj, <coughs> the great devotee in the the great devotee of the Lord, born in the family of an atheist, Patni Satarupa, Manohu of Manu, Sa he, Cha also, Manohu Sayambhuva, Cha. and tat atma jascha and his children like priyavrata <coughs> uttanapad devahuti etc prachina barhi prachina barhi ribhu ribhu anga anga uta even dhruva dhruva cha and so it's up to here this 23 43rd verse goes so anyway we will read the whole part whole the entire translation and then we'll also read the purport although we did it yesterday we are repeating today O Narada although the potencies of the Lord are unknow- unknowable and immeasurable still because we are all surrendered souls we know how he acts through yogamay potencies and similarly the potencies of the Lord are also known to the all powerful Shiva <coughs> the great king of the atheist family namely Prahlad Maharaj Shyambhuva Manu his wife Satarupa his sons and daughters like priyavrata uttanapad akuti devahuti and prashuti prachina barhi ribhu anga the father of bena maharaj dhruva ikshaku aila muchukunda maharaj janak gadhi raghu ambarish sagar gaya nahusha mandhata alarka shatadhanva anu Rantidev, Bhishma, Bali, Amurtaraya, Dilip, Shobhari, Utanka, Shibi, Devala, Pippalada, Sarasata, Uddhava, Parashara, Bhurishena, Vibhishan, Hanuman, Sukadev, Goswami, Arjun, Arishtashena, Vidura, Shutadev, etc. purport by shri prabhupan all the great devotees of the lord as mentioned above who flourished in the past or present and all the devotees of the lord who will come in the future are aware of the different potencies of the lord along with the potency of his name quality pastimes entourage personality etc and how do they know certainly it is not by mental speculation nor by any attempt by dint of limited instruments of knowledge 
by the limited instruments of knowledge either the senses or the material or the material instruments like microscopes or telescopes one cannot even fully know the lord's material potencies which are manifested before our eyes for example there are many millions and billions of planets far far beyond the scientist's calculation but these are only the manifestations of the lord's external energy what can the scientist hope to know of the spiritual potency of the lord by which by lord by such material efforts <laughs> mental speculations by adding some dozens of ifs and maybes cannot aid the advancement of knowledge on the contrary such mental speculations will only end in despair by dismissing the co- the case abruptly <coughs> and declaring the non-existence of god the same person therefore ceases to speculate on subjects beyond the jurisdiction of his tiny brain and as a matter of course he tries to learn to surrender unto the supreme lord which alone can lead one to the platform of real knowledge in the upanishads it is clearly said that the supreme personality of godhead can never be known simply by working very hard and taxing the good brain nor can he be known simply by mental speculation and jugglery of words the lord is knowable only by one who is a surrendered soul herein brahma ji the greatest of all material living beings acknowledges this truth therefore the fruitless spoiling of energy by pers- by pursuing the path of ex- by experimental knowledge must be given up one should gain knowledge by surrendering unto the lord and by acknowledging the authority of the persons mentioned herein the lord is unlimited and by the grace of the yogamaya helps the surrendered souls to know him helps the surrendered soul to know him proportionately with the with the advance of one's surrender so <clears throat> yesterday we discussed that since there are so many exalted personalities have been mentioned here in this verse we discuss about those personalities who is the first personality mentioned here uh, lord shiva uh, shivascha um vedah manga paramas hi yog mayam juyam bhavascha uh, bhava is one name of lord shiva the other day we discussed about bhavani bharta in the class of in chaitanya charitamrita class now what who mentioned that that expression kesha bharati and how did chaitanya mahaprabhu pointed out the mistake of that expression uh, bhava is the name of lord shiva and lord shiva's wife is therefore is known as bhavani uh, just as narayan's wife is narayani uh, shiva's wife is shivani uh, so in this way ni indicates the wife uh, griha grihini <laughs> in this way ni indicates the wife so lord shiva's wife is bhavani and bharta means husband Uh, so it literally means shiva's wife's husband uh, which meant that shiva's wife had another husband other than lord shiva which is uh, which is a mistake so bhava is a name of lord shiva and it is very important for us to recognize who is lord shiva because we are in the place of lord shiva <laughs> this city mahakal is the city of mahakal mahakaleshwar mahakal is a name of lord shiva he is 
the destroyer in the form of time. And this is the place of Ujjain, is the place of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva is a Gunavatar of Krishna. How many different types of incarnations are there of Krishna? How many? How many of you know how many types of incarnations are there? Only three. There are? Okay, how many? Twenty-two. Okay. Six types of Six types of incarnations. What are those six types? Very good. So these are the six types of incarnations of the six categories of incarnations of the Lord. So out of them, the one is Gunavatars. And what happens in the mode of ignorance? In the mode of ignorance, one falls asleep. So wake him up. Stand up, stand up. Dari Bara. <clears throat> so, Gunavatar, uh, there are three different modes, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead takes care of those three modes. In the, there, those three modes are mode of goodness, mode of passion, mode of ignorance, in which Incarnation, the Lord takes care of the mode of goodness. Hmm. Vishnu, in which incarnation he takes care of mode of passion. Brahma, Brahma. in which incarnation he takes care of the mode of ignorance. Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva. Hmm. These are the three controllers of three different modes. <coughs> what are the activities of different modes? Uh, what happens? What is the activity in the mode of goodness? Maintenance. What is the activity in the mode of passion? Creation. Creation. What is the activity in the mode of ignorance? Annihilation or destruction. So in the mode of passion, Brahma creates. In the mode of goodness, Vishnu maintains. And in the mode of ignorance, the Lord Shiva destroys. So the, all three are actually the Gunavatas, are the incarnations of the Supreme Personality of the Lord. All three are the incarnations of the Lord. Incarnation means what? Incarnation means uh, the Lord Himself. You remember there are two types of expansions of the Lord? Uh, two types of expansions of the Lord. What are those two types of expansions? Ganganarayan? Shangsha and Vijnamsha. The Shangsha incarnation or Shangsha expansions are the Lord expands Himself, Himself, as He is. So, like it is like from one He becomes two, becomes four, He becomes expands. In this way He expands in innumerable forms. But all those expansions has the same potency of the Lord. <clears throat> Which verse describes that in Brahma Samhita? Very good. Who said Diparchi Reva? Did you say it? Okay. Recite the verse. <laughs> Only near the first line. <laughs> Who knows that verse? Okay, Malini. Very good. <coughs> so Deepar Chireva hi Dashantaram Bhupeta. The incarnations of the Lord are Swangsha Vistar, the expansion in his own form. 
has been described in this way, just, just as one lamp lights many other lamps. Now when the lamps are lit, then what happens? After the lamp is lit, it gives out the, gives out the same amount of light and heat as the first lamp that lit it. Is there any difference between the first lamp that lit and the tenth lamp? Hmm? No. The same lamp. Uh, but the first lamp is the lamp that lit the other lamps. Isn't it a very nice example of the incarnations of the Lord? Dipar chireva hidasantaram pupetya. Just as one lamp lights many other lamps, uh, similarly, uh, the Lord expands uh, Himself into many other forms, uh, many other forms that are that are non-different from Himself. They have the same potency. Uh, so, <clears throat> so, but there are six different categories. And one category that we are discussing here is guna avatar. The guna, uh, the modes of the material nature are controlled. Uh, so, is there any difference between Lord, then Lord uh, um, Shiva and Sri Krishna? Mm. Not really. But there is a little difference also. Mm. That also has been explained in Brahma Samhita. Which verse? Raise your hand. Let's see who knows. Okay, Vijayananda. Tumi bolo, Vijayananda. I'm very sure Tumi jodi bolte parte tal toh ke bolte bolta. If you could say it, then I would have told you to. Which verse of Brahma Samhita describes hmm, the difference between Lord Shiva and Krishna, Govinda? <coughs> okay, who else? Sadhan Siddhi? Which verse? You, you, read, you raised your hand. Why did you do that? Last time was Shiva. Vastha mane kote bachcha na. Tile haat tu le chile khen. Okay, who knows? Who else raised his hand? Huh? Okay. Uh, Nitai Chandra? Very good. Okay. How many of you know this verse? Okay, Vijayananda. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now you can sit down. <laughs> but don't fall asleep again. <laughs> Vikara Vishesha Yoga. Kshiram means uh, Sajatra Kshirabdhi Shravati Suravi Parcha. Kshiram means milk. Kshiram Jatha. Jatha means just like, <clears throat> just as. Kshiram Jatha Dodhi Vikara Vishesha Yoga. Uh, Vikara uh, Vishesha Yoga. By some special yoga means uh, addish, adding by uh, contact by uh, addition of something very special. What is that special thing? Uh, just as milk in contact with acid becomes yogurt. Isn't it? Milk becomes yogurt. Is there any difference between milk and yogurt? Uh, so, Raga Pandit is shaking his head. Uh, let's see what is the difference. The quality is different. Quality is yeah. different. 
Yes. Your heart is very good for particular disease or something. Okay. Just milk and take two grams. Okay. Milk and yogurt is actually the same. Milk became yogurt. A pot of milk became yogurt. The same milk that became yogurt. There is, in one way, there is no difference. But there is some difference also. The difference is that milk can become yogurt, but yogurt cannot become milk. And also, as Raghupandit said, <laughs> it tastes different. <laughs> its purpose is different. And uh, like milk may, actually Prabhupada mentions about that also, that milk may cause indigestion. Uh, but if you take yogurt, then the indigestion will become cured. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> so the, it's actually the analogies, analogies should be ta- accepted only in s- certain Context, analogy should not be taken as a whole. Like, it's not that, that the example of milk and yogurt is given here, that means Vishnu is milk and Shiva is yogurt. Is it? No, it's just an example is given, just as uh, Yatha Vikara Visheshu Yogat. So, <clears throat> Similarly, uh, Lord Shiva, uh, Vishnu, uh, Samupaiti uh, Karjat, to, in order to perform some special purpose, some special mission, some special objective, Vishnu, uh, Sambhutamupi Samupaiti Karjat, uh, Sambhutamupi, he becomes Shambhu, Lord Shiva. And this karjad has been dis- described in many ways. One karja is to cause the annihilation, to destroy. Vishnu maintains and as Lord Shiva, he destroys. In order to cause the destruction, in order to... Destruction is necessary. Like, uh, especially when we are when we are, when you go to America, we see how destruction sometimes is necessary. Especially in big cities like New York. What is happening always? They're breaking one building to build another building. <coughs> Prabhupada used to say that this is a Western culture. They create, build something, then they keep it for some time and then they become tired of it. Okay, break it, bring another and something new. So Prabhupada says, fickle-mindedness, fickle-minded, they're not steady. Whereas in Sattvagun, what happens, that's, the, that's actually the indication of mode of passion. In the mode of passion, one becomes very fickle, he's not satisfied with one thing. Whereas in the mode of goodness, it remains. Mode of goodness is steady. Like we see in India, there are so many cities. Ujjain is one of them, but in Ujjain, the old architects, old architecture is not so prominent. But when you go to cities like uh, Varanasi, we see there are buildings so old, still existing. Nobody knows how old they are. <clears throat> in um, places like uh, even Delhi, we see so many old buildings. There is one castle in Delhi which is considered to be the Pandavas castle. Old uh, fort. That means if, the, if it belonged to the Pandavas, that means it's 5,000 years old. <clears throat> what to speak of 5,000 years old? In America there is nothing more than 500, I mean nothing even 500 years old. <coughs> There's hardly anything 50 years old. In America, if a building is 20 years old, they say it's an old building. Whereas in India, there are buildings that are hundreds of years old. 
what does it indicate? That India is in the mode of goodness, whereas America is in the mode of passion. Europe is not so bad. In Europe, at least, there are some old buildings, like a few hundred years old. And they, re they have retained it. But there is a saying between the difference between English and French. English stuck to their traditions, whereas the French are always changing. Like uh, in England, the Queen's Guards, they have the same uniform, the same time, not wearing the same uniform. <laughs> But they, the style of the uniform is the, the same for hundreds of years. Uh, they have the typical uh, uniform, red coat, and this, they have a high uh, hat made of some sort of far. And whereas in France, uh, they had been changing their uniforms, the royal, uni royal guards' uniforms, every few months. And that shows uh, that at least in England they're relatively more in the good, uh, relatively more in goodness than the French people. So this is how the uh, the uh, modes actually affect the mentality and activities of the people. So Lord Shiva actually is in charge of the mode of ignorance and this mode is specifically meant for uh, destruction. So Lord Shiva destroys. In order to destroy Krishna, Govinda transforms himself into Lord Shiva. Another descriptions have been given in Brahma Samhita, uh, at the beginning of the fifth chapter of Brahma Samhita, that how <coughs> Mahavishnu's glance is actually Sambhu. Mahavishnu, uh, how, did the how does the material creation become manifest? Material creation becomes manifest due to the glance of Mahavishnu to, to Maya. Mahavishnu uh, glances towards Maya and as a result of that, the material nature becomes kubdha, agitated. And that agitation causes the uh, manifestation of the material nature. Now, Vish Brahma Samhita is describing that this glance of Mahavishnu is actually Shampu. Uh, Jyotir. We can, we can see the expression also, Jyotir Linga. Jyotir Linga, uh, the Lord Shiva abode or Lord Shiva has been described as Jyotir Linga. Lord Shiva's form has been described as Jyotir Linga. Jyoti means uh, light. Uh, so this light is what? Mahavishnu's glance. And what is this <coughs> glance cause, causing? It's causing the creation. How is the creation caused? The material nature becoming manifest again. Because of the projection of living entities, the jivas in the material nature. So, <clears throat> these jivas are projected into the material nature through the glance of Mahavishnu. This glance of Mahavishnu is Lord Shiva. So, it is through Lord Shiva that the living entities have come to this material nature. Therefore, Lord Shiva is identified or uh, symbolized as Lingam, Jyotir Lingam, through which uh, the medium through which the living entities come in the womb of the material nature. So, <clears throat> in simple words, we can say that we have came to the material nature through Lord Shiva. Now, if we want to go back to the spiritual sky, how will you have to go back? Don't you have to go back the same way? In a way. And that's why you also see Lord Shiva is guarding the gate of Vaikuntha. Lord Shiva guards the gate of Vaikuntha. That means, if someone is, unless someone is qualified, Lord Shiva will not let him go in there. 
He will say, come on, where are you going? No, you are not qualified, go back. And if you try to force your way, then what will Lord Shiva do? He has a trident in his hand. And we also see uh, Lord Shiva is guarding also the Rasa Mandali as, mm, as uh, Gopeshwar Shiva. Rasa Mandali, the Rasa dance, Krishna's Rasa dance, not everybody can enter there. So if you want to enter there, then you have to have the permission of Lord Shiva. Uh, so that is Lord Shiva. He is, he is Krishna himself. He has manifested himself as Lord Shiva in order to deal with the material nature. Therefore, among the person, when Brahma is describing, among the personalities who knows about the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his for name, form, qualities, pastimes, uh, entourage, attributes, uh, <coughs> Lord Shiva is the foremost. Then after Lord Shiva, who is mentioned? After Lord Shiva, Daitya Varjaha. Who is this Daitya Varjaha? Daitya means uh, demon. And Varja means? Varja means who knows? Later. Okay. Best among. Best. Best among the Daitas. So who is the best among the Daitas? Prahlad Maharaj. <coughs> so Prahlad Maharaj was a great devotee of the Lord. How did Prahlad Maharaj become a devotee? Prahlad Maharaj became a devotee by coming in contact with Narad Muni when he was in the womb of his mother. Like yesterday, uh, I was at the end of the class, I was mentioning about the inconceivable nature of the descriptions of Shri Shri Bhagavatam. <coughs> like here we are seeing that Brahma is tell, instructing Narad Muni about the greatness of Krishna. Uh, and in course he is mentioning about Prahlad, uh, who actually became a devotee of the Lord by the mercy of Narad Muni due to Narad Muni's instructions. So it's inconceivable. We can't figure out what it, how it's possible. There are ways to conceive also, because we have, as we mentioned, that things happen time and time again, not only in every day of Brahma, but in every few minutes of Brahma's life. Like the four Jugas, things are repeating. In every uh, <coughs> Satya Yuga, there is a Hiranyakashipu, uh, and there is Prahlad, his son, uh, and then Hiranyakashipu uh, persecutes his son, Prahlad, and Nishingadev comes and kills him. So uh, it happens. So there is no, I mean, we cannot really see things from our limited perspective. We cannot understand things uh, with our limited perspective. Therefore, it has been, the Lord has been described as unknowable and immeasurable in this verse. The Supreme Personality of God is unknowable. We cannot know Him and we cannot measure Him. We are so tiny. Just as can a drop uh, measure the ocean? No. So that is how inconceivable the Supreme Personality of Godhead is. Therefore, the only way that has been prescribed or the only way that is <coughs> possible to know the Lord by the only way we can possibly get to know the Lord is sudden is devotion, which begins with surrender, and then the Lord can manifest Himself in front of our limited sense perceptions. So Prahlad is a great devotee uh, who was born in a demoniac family. 
His father <clears throat> was such a terrible demon, so powerful that he actually defeated the demigods. The demigods were afraid of him. They used to tremble with fear just by hearing his name and what to speak of when they saw that there, uh, there is an expression of anger in his eyebrows. Brukuti Kutila. Uh, Brukuti, when he, uh, when he twisted his eyebrows, expressing his anger, and just as Sitaram does sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> then the demigods become terrible, become so afraid that they start to uh, shake, tremble with fear. So, <clears throat> so that demon, uh, who was an enemy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, when he found out that his own son, Prahlad, became a devotee of the Lord, he decided to kill Prahlad. And he tried to kill him in so many ways, but nothing happened to his son. Uh, when Krishna protects, can anyone harm his devotee? When Krishna protects, nobody can harm his devotees. That's how merciful Krishna is. Even the greatest demon tried to kill, kill Prahlad in so many ways. First thing he did is ordered his bodyguards that kill this boy. Now his bodyguards were not just ordinary soldiers. His bodyguards were so powerful that they could fight with the demigods and defeat them. So their, their weapons must have been so advanced, so powerful. And they tried to kill Prahlad, but nothing happened to Prahlad. They struck him with their swords and spears, but swords and spears just broke into pieces. They were surprised. They thought this boy must have some mystic power. Then Hiranyakashipu said, okay, he may have some mystic power, so throw him in the pit of the snakes. And those snakes were not just ordinary cobras or king cobras. And those snakes are celestial snakes. Hiranyakashipu was not dealing with just ordinary uh, snakes. He was dealing with the celestial snakes because his, uh, he is uh, on a much higher plane that he was acting on. The snakes with not only five heads or ten heads, uh, many, many heads. Uh, so they must have, their sacks must have been filled with gallons of venoms. <laughs> and they're fighting <coughs> Prahlad. Nothing happened to Prahlad. And finally the snakes started to cry, all those snakes. Oh Lord Hiranyakashipu, our fangs are broken and our sacks are empty. Our sacks of poison are empty and we are completely exhausted. We have been biting him for so many hours and nothing happened to him. Please do something. So this is how huh, every attack becomes, every attack becomes foiled when the Lord gives protection. Then Prahlad was taken to be thrown from the top of a mountain. Nothing happened to Prahlad. Then a fire was made with mountainous logs <coughs> and Prahlad was thrown in that fire. Nothing happened. Then Hiran, finally Hiranagashipu decided that throw him in the water, in the ocean, and bury him with, uh, with mountain peaks and big, big boulders. So they threw Prahlad and then they started to throw all these boulders so that to bury him under the ocean. Nothing happened to Prahlad. Prahlad just came out. Uh, he just pushed aside those big, big <laughs> boulders uh, and came out. And Hiranyakashipu asked, what, what's the matter? 
where did you get this power? Then he said, wherever everyone gets this power from, I'm getting this power from him. He's the one who's protecting me. You also got the power from him, actually. So he asked, who is that? That's Hari. What? Uh, Hiranagashipu was so angry. And then he asked, where is your Hari? Prahlad said, he's everywhere. Is he there in this pillar? He said, yes. And Hiranagashipu just with one punch, he broke that massive stone pillar. And as the pillar was crumbling, from within the pillar, what a very strange form appeared. He couldn't first figure out what it was, and then he saw a form that has the head of a lion and the body of a man. And this form, this personality was roaring thunderously. And Hiranagashipu immediately pulled out his sword and tried to attack. He was a very skilled warrior. As I mentioned, like he defeated the demigods, so powerful. But this personality was was amazing. Prahlad um, Hiranagashipu just couldn't deal with him. So, but he fought for a long, long time, and then finally, uh, the Lord just picked him up placed him on his lap and just like a child uh, kills a wasp with his nail, the Lord Tanid Dalita Hiranyakashipu Tanu Pringam. The body of Hiranyakashipu that even thunder couldn't do anything. Uh, the thunder would, uh, Indra would strike Hiranyakashipu with thunder and he'd give him. Just <laughs> that is how powerful he was. But the Lord uh, just picked him up uh, and with his nail, Tabakara Kamala Bare, Nakham Adbhuta Shringam. Dalita Hiran Nakashipu Tanu Bringam. Bringam means uh, bee or a wasp. Uh, wasp body is very soft. You can just, uh, with your no- nail, you can just cut it open. And that's what he did. But the Lord, even after killing Hiranyakashipu, he was so angry that he was roaring. And no one was able to approach him. Everyone was afraid. He was so angry. Brahma, Shiva, even Lakshmi Devi was afraid to go near him. But Brahma pushed Prahlad. And Prahlad knew that he is the personality who has been protecting me all the time. So even if he is angry, he is not angry with me. So Prahlad just went to him. And seeing Prahlad, the Lord's anger subsided. He picked him up with affection, placed him on his lap. So that is how wonderful the Lord is, and that's how wonderful His devotees are. So after Prahlad, <coughs> Sayam Bhuba Manu and Shatarupa, uh, who have been mentioned after Prahlad, Sayam Bhuba Manu and Shatarupa. They are also knowers of the Lord and His inconceivable potency. Manu, there are, how many Manus are there? There are 14 Manus in a day of Brahma. Who is the first Manu? The first Manu is called Sayam Bhuva Manu. The Sanskrit names often are related to the father. Swayam is the name of Brahma. And the Manu that came from Brahma is known as Sayambhuva Manu. Brahma, the Manu who is the son of Sayambhu, who appeared from Sayambhu. 
स्वयंभू स्वयंभू स्वयं भू वन हु इज बाय हिमसेल्फ generally living entities need a father and mother but that was not the case with brahma he just <coughs> appeared without any father and mother swayam bhu so this swayam bhu's son is swayam bhuva brahma had a few sons the first four are the four kumaras <coughs> then he generated Ten other sons from his mind, who are known as Brahma's Manasa Putra. From his mind, from Brahma's mind, they appeared. So, <clears throat> they are the Prajapatis, nine Prajapatis, and Narad Muni. Those nine Prajapatis are uh, Pulasta, Pulaha, Atri, Angira, Modici. Vashishta, Dakya, and the youngest one is Nagad. So these are the Prajapatis, and then Brahma <coughs> generated; he produced one boy and one girl. From from his right hand side came out Manu, Sayambhuva Manu, and from his left hand side came out Shatru. and manu is the origin of mankind manu is the father of mankind all therefore manu's son because they are ma- we are manu's sons therefore we are known as manavas or manushyas so we see that in all different languages mankind is identified in this way has something to do with m a n man <laughs> do you see the link man and manu uh, manu and manava manu and manushyas uh, so <clears throat> so this is how that sayambhuva manu is the first man and his wife is shatrupa So Manu and Shatrupa had two sons and three daughters. And those two sons are Priyavrata and Uttanapad, and three daughters are Akuti, Prashuti, and Devahuti. Akuti, second one is Devahuti, and Prashuti. So in this way. <coughs> it has been pointed out that manu and his children manu and shatrupa and their children also knew the supreme personality of god not only his sons knew about the supreme personality of god and even his daughters and his daughters are very very exalted personalities the first daughter uh, uh first daughter uh, akuti was given to uh i forgot ruchi 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 kumuni and he gave her ruchi. manu huh? ruchi ruchi yeah ruchi so ruchi and uh, manu gave akuti to ruchi on one condition that their her son would be given to him so although he had two sons generally sometimes such condition is made when the father didn't have a son and the daughter is given in marriage and with the condition that his her first son should be given back to given to me but uh, although he had two sons uh, priyavrata and uttanapad but he wanted the son of akuti to be given to him and shri vishnu chakravarti thakur explained why because Sayambhuva Manu knew that the supreme personality of Godhead would appear as the son of Akuti. Therefore, he wanted to have that son as his son. He wanted to have the Lord as his son, and that is Yagya. His name is Yagya. 
And Devahuti, as you know, was given to Kardamamuni and his son also was an incarnation of the Lord. Kapil, Kapil Muni, Kapil Dev. And Prashuti was given to Daksha. And Prashuti is, uh, had Prashuti had many daughters and the youngest one is Sati, who was married to Lord Shiva. And Priyavrata and his son is, uh, and his brother Uttanapad, uh, Priyavrata as you all know, who was Priyavrata's? Uh, Priyavrata uh, is, uh, um, Priyavrata has actually ten sons. Priyavrata was married to Barhishmati and he had ten sons and Uttanapad had two wives and from these two wives he had two sons. <coughs> Who are those two wives of Uttanapad? No, his wives are yeah, uh, Suni, Su, Suniti and Suruchi. Suniti's son was Dhruva and Suruchi's son was Uttam. And you know what happened? Like Dhruva was denied the right to sit on his father's lap by his stepmother. Suniti was very dear to his father and therefore insulted Dhruva at the age of six. He left home, went to the forest, performed great austerities. Not that he was performing great austerities, he was searching for the Lord. His mother said that uh, you just take shelter of Hari, Hari can fulfill everybody's desire. And Dhruva asked, where can I find Hari? Where is Hari? Where can I find him? He said, when people want to search for Hari, they go to the forest. <laughs> so just as a mother pacifies the little child, but Dhruva was so determined that when his mother told that, uh, that Hari can be found in the forest, he just left home and went to the forest. And he didn't have any knowledge who is Hari, so he started to look for Hari everywhere. Whoever he saw, he started asking, are you Hari? <laughs> He saw a lion in the forest, of course, they are full of animals, uh, ferocious animals. In the forest, there are no men. Uh, so he was actually looking for Hari in the middle of the forest. <clears throat> and he saw the lion uh, and he asked, are you Hari? The lion said, no. <laughs> <laughs> He asked the elephants, he asked the bears, he asked the snakes, he asked the deers, he asked the peacocks, he asked the crocodiles. And uh, so in this way he was searching for Hari, completely fearless. And because he was so earnest in his search that even those wild animals did not do anything to him. Lord sitting in the heart of every living entity guides him and they did not harm Dhruva Maharaj. Then Narad Muni came and Narad Muni told him how to meditate upon the Lord. He gave him the mantra Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudeva. And he, Guru, started to meditate upon the Lord, chanting that mantra. And the effect of the mantra was taking him into higher and higher planes. And finally the Lord came and bestowed his mercy upon Dhruva. <clears throat> Dhruva got the place, uh, position, which was far superior to anyone, the abode of the Lord. And also Dhruva Maharaj's disappearance from the planet also is very, very beautiful. When the time came for Dhruva Maharaj to leave his body, Dhruva Maharaj actually took Banaprasth, he retired from his kingdom 
and he was in Badari Kashram, associating with the saintly personalities high up in the Himalayas. And then uh, one day a chariot came from Vaikuntha. And Vishnu Dutas came and told Dhruva Maharaj, So the Lord has sent the chariot for you. So Dhruva Maharaj said, Oh, I see. Thank you very much for bestowing your mercy upon me. And he went to Bath. He took leave from all the saintly personalities there. Then he circumambulated the chariot three times. And then when he was about to climb onto the chariot, he found that someone is standing there, uh, kneeling in front of him with his hands folded in respect. Ruva asked, who are you? He said, I'm death personified. I'm death. So, Dhruva asked, so what do you want? He said, please bestow your mercy upon me. So then Dhruva Maharaj placed his feet on the head of death and climbed onto the chariot. So this is how uh, death treats a devotee, a pure devotee of the Lord. Yes, death may approach a devotee, death may come to a devotee, but how? He'll come, he'll come with a folded hands, uh, kneeling in front of him, begging for his mercy. Please bestow your mercy upon me. And what do the devotee do? The merciful devotee places his lotus feet on the head of death. <clears throat> that is the... <clears throat> Wonderful advantage of being a devotee of the Lord. Well, there are 43 personalities mentioned in this verse, in these three verses. I thought I'll cover 16, but today I covered only up to four. <laughs> Do you want to listen to this, uh, about these personalities? Okay, then tomorrow we will continue. The ones that I decided to do today, there's on chrono in serial order. The King Prachinabarhi, then Ribhu, Anga, Dhruva Maharaj, uh, Ikshaku, Oila, then Muchukunda, Janakraj, Maharaj Janak, Gadhi, Raghu, and Ambarish. So these are the six person, the sixteen personalities I thought of discussing. Anyway, tomorrow I'll go quickly. Thank you very much. Does anybody have any question or comment? Yeah. <coughs> There is a mention in Hari Bhakti Vilas, Sanatana Goswami mentioned. Not, I don't know about Dhruva Maharaj, but Prahlad Maharaj has been mentioned by Sanatana Goswami. And yeah, in Priha Bhagavatam, quoting from some Puranas. Not Bhir, I'm sorry, Hari Bhakti Vilas. Okay. Yes, Sitara. We were talking the other day about women's love, uh, but here we see how women's love is defeated because both man and woman came out of the body of Brahma. So the original woman, Sadaruba, came out of the body of a man. So man is not actually of woman born. Oh, that's how they want the, their it's superiority. <laughs> <laughs> man himself is not of woman born, man is born of man. Oh yeah, good. So we can defeat them very easily. So actually, we didn't come from. And even the original man Brahma came from the neighbor. Anyway, we are not in such unhealthy competition.
<coughs> we respect them, yes, we respect them as mothers. And so we, in Krishna consciousness, everything is perfectly harmonized. Yes, Ramesh. Similarly, all Zemindars are worshipped in their original forms, but Lord Shiva normally is in this space, worshipped in the form of Jyotilinga, not mm. in the form of Lord Shiva and Parvati. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, this indicates that Lord Shiva's purpose has been very clearly indicated. That that he is actually the transformation of the Lord to accomplish this very special purpose of of creation or manifesting the material nature. Therefore, the material nature is Durga or Mahamaya and Lord Shiva is her husband. Uh, the material nature is the mother and Lord Shiva is the original father. Like when Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Tashan Brahmo Mahajonir Ahang Vija Pradaprita is actually indicating Lord Shiva. Because Krishna or Vishnu directly doesn't deal with the material nature. That's why he transforms himself into Lord Shiva. Because material nature is external potency. So he cannot directly deal with the material nature. Because it's external potency, he does, cannot or doesn't deal directly with it. He deals with the material nature, transforming himself into Lord Shiva. Yes, yeah. In multiple translations, Bhagavan was translated as the great demigod. Yeah. Normally, if Bhagavan is translated as the supreme personality of God. Right, so right. Is yeah, sometimes some great personalities uh, are identified as Bhagavan. Like Lord Shiva is uh, identified as Bhagavan. But Prabhupada is making the point that these address of Bhagavan out of respect, does not indicate the supreme, supreme personality of God. Uh, like uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, as you like, as, and there it indicates as a great demigod as Bhagavan. Like that expression of Bhagavan indicates a great demigod or a great personality, not the supreme personality. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Yes. Bali Maharaj, he offered everything, even himself also, to God. <coughs> but why Prahlad Maharaj is the best among the temples? Uh, well, because the way Prahlad Maharaj received the mercy of the Lord, you see, Bali Maharaj, <coughs> although he offered everything to the Lord, but his activities were not in, conf in compliance with the Lord's law and order situation, law and order arrangement. He made the arrangement, the demigods will take control of the thing, but Bali's uh, mood was, why they will be enjoying? We come from the same family. Why they will have the heavenly planets and we'll be rotting in hell. <laughs> so he said, well, he took over. So that was in defiance to the Lord, Lord's arrangement. Therefore the Lord came to take away everything from him. Whereas Prahlad never did that. Prahlad just accepted. So Bali is also a Mahajan, a great devotee, but not in the same category as Prahlad. It is something like, uh, I'll just give an example of what it is. Like, say for example, uh, somebody uh, may be submissive to me in the context of Ujjain temple, but doesn't accept the authority of the authority structure of the temple. Uh, then you have seen how I deal with them. If you accept me, if you accept my authority, you have to accept the authority structure that I have created. 
If you don't accept the authority structure, that means you are not really accepting my authority. So Bali Maharaj's situation was something like that. He was submissive to Krishna, but he was defined to the demigods uh, who are arranged by the Lord himself. Yeah. So it is mentioned that Adharva and Vrsha are uh, born from Brahma, from the back of Brahma. So they were actually brother and sister. But uh, they married and they uh, gave birth to some, I don't remember, but something like Kali or something. Kali is his great grandson. Okay. <laughs> and their line is like that brother and sister getting married. Huh. Like, then there, you know, like, I forgot also the line, like, uh, Adharma and Mrisha, uh, and, yeah, gave birth to uh, anger and envy. And anger and, they got married. Then anger and envy gave birth to Kali. So, uh, because they were born of Brahma, they were considered brother and sister. But we see also in Manu and Shatarupa, they were also like born from Brahma. So why does the same uh, not apply in this case? Yeah, that is... Uh, you see, that's why it has been pointed out actually. I don't know whether in... That although when the, the Manu and Shatarupa's appearance has been described, it has been pointed out that uh, there is no description of whether they are Brahma's children or not, whether they consider to be Brahma's children. Hmm. They just said that they came from the hand. The side came from Brahma's body, yeah. but that time you see, like the creation had to go was going on in some way, like from the mind. Yeah. Like, like everyone was actually coming from Brahma. So how would, he was the original personality, so they had to be. But with them, the system didn't become that brother and sister will always get married, as in case of Adharma and Misha. It became, that is their standard. <laughs> Whereas that's not the case with Manu and Satarupa. Their offspring, they multiplied. Like, um, as we say, like their first offsprings were Dhru, uh, uh, the uh, Priyavrata and Uttanapad and Akuti, Prashuti and Devahuti. So they are three daughters were given ma in marriage to different great personalities, exalted personalities. <coughs> Well, uh, there actually Bhagavatam describes over two varahas, Sveta varaha and Rakta varaha. But uh, general, well, it's you know like I. Some, not that all the incarnations come on every day or every Chatur Yuga, but some do come. And uh, like, for example, Jugavatars come, but not the Varaha Devi is not a Jugavatar, it is a Leela Avatar. Mm. So when the Lord performs his Leela, then, you know, that particular Leela demands or needs Varaha Dev's appearance. Yeah. Why Lord, why Lord come to the rescue of Lord soul and he, Lord himself accepted mm. Yeah, you see, we deal with 24 hours a day, but the Lord deals with eternity. Right? So it, sometimes it takes time, <laughs> but he comes. <laughs> he's coming because he's dealing with such a huge concept of time. You know, for us it may be 24 hours, you know, oh, he, why did it take so long? 
But for him, you see, like he is dealing with such a large, huge concept of time, it takes some time. Another thing is that if he came, then the past times wouldn't have taken place the way the excitement would have been lost. Isn't it? If there was no danger, no threat, no uh, difficulty, then the rescue operation doesn't really have so much relevance. Right? But if the situation is difficult and they're rescued, then everybody says, wow. Mm. <clears throat> like for example, uh, if somebody is just about to sleep and you catch him, right, while he was about to fall. You know, it's nice that you saved him from the fall, but it's, no one takes it that amazingly, that excitedly. But if somebody is falling from 10th story, top of the 10th story building, and then somebody Batman comes and catches him. That becomes a newspaper. Uh, that makes it to the front page of the newspaper. Why? Because the the danger involved falling in falling from tenth floor is much more uh, much more uh, exciting, and the rescuing also becomes equally exciting. Right. I'm just thinking of Krishna Aichan's uh, question here in terms of Satarupa and Swayambhuva. And the title of this chapter is Specific Inclinations for Specific Purposes. Schedule <coughs> specific purpose. So the specific purpose of Brahma was to procreate, to fulfill a purpose. So there would be very little reason for the birth of Swayambhuva and Satarupa if their purpose in procreation and becoming part of his fulfillment was not. Uh, Part of their mission. But Brahma became very happy that they accepted their duty, whereas he was very angry that uh, the four Kumaras did not accept their duty or they accepted their position. Now, he's considered, his question was a little different. His question was that from back of uh, Brahma's body, from Brahma's back, Adharma and uh, uh, Mrisha. Uh, appeared. So sin, adharma and sin appeared. Right? So they got married and they gave birth to a son and a daughter. And that son and daughter got married. Then they gave birth to a son and daughter. They got married uh, and so forth. Now his point is, I mean, well, we know that that is inappropriate. It's sinful, that arrangement. But we also see that Manu and Satarupa also came from Brahma's body, therefore they can be treated, considered as brothers and sisters, brother and sister. And they got married and they had procreated. Then why this is, this is accepted So that was the thing, that was a consideration, and that's why uh, the answer was, well, I mean, initially, since there was nobody, they had to come from Brahma's, Brahma himself, but with them, it didn't become a standard procedure that brothers and sisters will get married. Right? They may have, and therefore, actually, Bhagavatam explains that although they came from Brahma's body, but it has, you know, it is not clear whether they are treated, considered to be Brahma's children. Because, you know, like, they came from the body of Brahma, but they are not actually considered to be the offspring of Brahma. I'm wondering if this is maybe the beginning of the Adam and Eve myth that Eve came from the earth of Adam. Yeah, there must be some, some naturally, originally, they, I mean, as I was pointing out, Manu's children, mankind. Yeah. Do you see the link? Even in English. <laughs> uh, of course, French is different. <laughs> but uh, German, uh, it's man. 
Uh, and so we can see the link, you know, how we are relating to Manu. Okay, thank you. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. <coughs>